Yes, welcome, welcome back, friends. Um, Sarah brought up, at least recently, when, with uh, different events going on that we were part of, we got to see uh, generations of people together um, and hear stories over, uh, you know, generations within families. And it was a common f refrain um, my mother, my mother, my ancestor, my uh, 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 environment, my whatever, was the result of the current sadness or sorrow or trouble or whatever was going on. And sure, to an extent, that can be true. But it is a fatalistic move. It's a deterministic move to say, therefore, there is nothing I can do about it. And I am really stuck uh, with this terrible hand that I have been given. One young man, and frankly, he's in his 20s, said, when we live, so we're of course in America. He said, when we live in America, we really have an opportunity to to do, you know, to succeed if we work hard, if we engage and uh, just not accept whatever sorrow comes his way. And that's closer to the truth, right? Um, that we do have this ability to have a holier, saner, and therefore healthier life. Yes, and, and in most other places. I mean, and, but I mean, the thing that is most interesting about that is given all of the advantages that we have, um, there's a great sorrow because the vast majority of people still feel as though they're kind of in chains. And I think that that's where I was talking about like that, I don't know, uh, that, that opposition that these two, that these, you know, the, the, these temperaments and character formation, these opposition that these two things are always, you know, nature versus nurture, right? Always are at odds with one another. And the only, the only thing that can explain people's inability to, I don't know, to recognize the goodnesses that are in front of them right here in America, right? Must be, must pertain to the spiritual life. There is because have, it, 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 have you heard this phrase, or at least it's kind of come up it's around me recently? It's my demons. It's wow. my demons. It's uh, you know, wow. you know, blah blah blah, or my demons. Wow. And it's almost you remember that was it Fred Sam Stanford, or he said, you know, the devil made me do it. That yeah, that right. was the line. Yeah, right. from, from that time. Right. And yeah, it is, I mean, it is very interesting because, you know, Satan loves his handiwork. Um, he's going to take credit for whatever it is that he does. And even in even if subconsciously there's an understanding that there is some secondary realm, right? There is an angelic realm that we are dealing with. Of, And truly, we have to remember that these angels, in some sense, too, I mean, Surely they don't have an ongoing quote unquote character formation, right? But they too have form and matter. They too are created. Uh, I was thinking about this the other day. And now let me try and think of how it was that I was thinking about it, that that, that the ranks of the angels, um, you know, permits them to uh, engage with one another. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to think about it. Just, maybe it'll come back to me. Um, because I think that it pertains to this, but they too had to have that moment of decision where they recognized that that in their handicap or whatever handicap an angel might be created with, right? I mean, and what that would simply mean is maybe you're just a lower rank and you have a lesser intellect than the angels that are above you, that in that handicap is the perfect ability to ascend to the divine assistance. Right. And so in recognizing that, that that ability to humble themselves and to submit themselves unto God because of that weakness, as opposed to, you know, cursing him because of that weakness, which is what the demons did. Right. They wanted to be more than what they were. 
you know, we find ourselves in that same situation where, you know, we can either assent to the fact that in our weakness, God will provide what lacks right through that in, that relationship of, of a supernatural nature, or we can curse him and fall deeper into what you are deter what you are calling that determinist or, or fatalist resignation to a life of sorrow. Now one can choose to be happy or one can choose to be sad. It really is within the capacity of the human person. It's a really an astounding thing that God gives us that level of control as it were, right? Because happiness as we know is not an emotion. I mean, one one can be, you know, in sorrow and still have a supernatural outlook towards happiness because we know that this isn't all that there is and that sorrows are fleeting and temporal, but that happiness by its nature, because it is divine, is eternal. You know, it's, it's got its culmination there. That's right. That's right. All right, friends. So let's let's get practical. Um, so in the next episode, we're going to take up uh, Father McElhorn, James McElhorn's particular examen. And he has a real nice way of each of us um, determining where our predominant sin will be. He doesn't go into the character as much as uh, Father Allman does. So I uh, put that out there with the page numbers for you to find your character. Knowing, was it Socrates, an examined life is, yeah, you know, not living, life. Living, yeah. Yeah, try, try. So we're trying to examine our life. So we do have a life that's worth living and is sane, um, the healthiest it can be, and predominantly the holiest it can be. So um, Father Allman does a good work with our characters. So helping us to see what tendencies we just, we are. Some people, you know, are morning people and they're just happy and perky. And that's just, and some people are, are not. <laughs> and we look at them and we just think, oh, how nice that would be. And we, you know, whatever that is, but right. we don't wallow there. And so, Father, we're going to Father McElhorn's book here. And just, can I, can I still, just sure, jump in, in there? But in there, you know, the, the thing that's really beautiful about that element of if one engages with the reality that one could be happy in the morning, right? Let's say that you aren't happy by nature, right? But that one engages with that thought. And because we're not fatalistic, we're not deterministic, we know that we have an ability to engage with our intellect and with our will, we could make an intellectual assent that one could be happy in the morning. And then sure. slowly, little by little, we can grow in virtue by, by choosing to temper our bad humor in the morning and becoming better over time. And that, I think, is one of the key things that people have to understand is that True. there is always hope of change. And even if you're never, you know, even if you personally are never truly, quote unquote, happy in the morning, other people, you can live with other people as though you are and have that be your own personal gift that you give to the Lord, right? I know that I wasn't made to be happy in the morning, but out of love for you and out of love for my family, I'm going to ascent to happiness in the morning. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that we need to let people know that they have that um, they have that strength to do things like that. They so sure do. They I, sure I think do. The world is very um, much like, well, you're just not a happy person in the morning, and you know that's just the way you are, and everybody else has to deal with it. Um, no, you actually, no. and in, and in being loving like that you will become love, right? And, and you know, it, it, I don't know, grace builds on nature. We've said this a multi multiple, uh, many, many times. But the reality is that in your giving that small act of love for someone that you love, you will become that person. You sure do. 
Yes, yes, you do. Thank you, Sarah. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right, friends, let's pick up with Father McElhorn in the next episode. Till then.